Hello, welcome to this presentation of International Plumbing Code Chapter 10, where we look at traps, interceptors, and separators. My name is Thomas, and I want to emphasize to you that what we are about to look at, traps, is what makes the difference between whether your living space stinks like rotten sewer gas and not. This is what protects you. These are critical, vital pieces of pipe that make all the difference. So in this presentation, we are going to look at the good, the bad, and the really ugly when it comes to traps. Hey, this is your opportunity to grab your code book, follow along with me. I'm going to go section by section, and then you can see what these words on the page are talking about as we discuss them. So grab your book, grab a highlighter. Chapter 10 is actually quite short. It's only about, you know, three pages and a little bit. So relatively painless, but once again, really important information. 1001.1 gives us the scope. This basically tells us that this chapter will govern the materials and the installation for traps, interceptors, and separators. 1002.1 states that every single fixture that we install should be separately trapped. That means a sink has its own trap, a tub has its own trap, everything we hook up has a trap, and that trap should have a liquid seal. Now this liquid seal is critical in preventing sewer gases from coming back into the building. Hey, I have to pause here and point out that understanding traps is the difference between someone who knows about plumbing and someone who doesn't. See, when I was a child, I remember my mom's wedding ring fell down in the sink and it got caught in that U-shaped piece of pipe. And I thought that's what it was for, to catch things you didn't want to lose. Turns out that's a convenient secondary purpose for the thing, but a true plumber knows this is about sewer gas and creating a liquid seal to stop the stink. 1002.1 has a number of specifics, and one of those we talked about was every fixture gets a trap. But we're going to look at a series of other things that are specific to when we are putting a trap by a fixture. Here's another one. Vertical distance shall not exceed 24 inches. I have a picture of a floor drain here. This one's notorious, right? You're in the underground, you dig in there, you put a trap. Now you can't see the trap, but it's below the sand here. But then you've got a standpipe coming up to the floor drain. And when you're down in the trenches and stuff, sometimes it's hard to know, well, uh, how deep am I really? But the thing is, that pipe coming up from a trap should not be any taller than 24 inches. And if you're deep in the ground, you might have to make some modifications or even add a vent to get this right. Another requirement for traps is that once you've come above the trap, you can turn horizontal, but you cannot go any more than 30 inches. You see here, we have a disposal waste kit. It's not going to exceed 30 inches, but if we were to like go on to connect, 30 inches is our max once we've passed the trap. Another requirement is that fixtures shall not be double trapped. This is only done by people who don't know what they're doing. So please don't do this because you're a plumber and you know better. One trap per fixture don't double trap. Now there are some exceptions to these rules about fixture traps. We learned that every single fixture is supposed to have a trap, but what about a toilet? Do you put a P-trap under the floor of a toilet? Absolutely not. You install a flange. Why not a trap? Well, because the toilet already has a trap. It's built into the fixture. That standing pool of water in the bowl is a liquid seal it is a trap that keeps sewer gases from coming out of the toilet and it is refilled every time the toilet is flushed so we don't have to install a trap. All right, another exception. We said that every fixture gets its own trap. However, it is all right for us to connect multiple compartment sinks together to a single trap. Couple of specifics here though. Once again, they cannot exceed 30 inch distance in horizontal travel. And also, any of those compartments cannot be more than six inches above the other compartments. And exception three states that floor drains that discharge into storm drainage in these parking structures do not need to be trapped. 
1002.2 talks about the design of the traps. It says that it must be self-scouring. What that means is as the fluid is moving through the trap, it should be washing the walls and moving everything out of the trap. What we don't want is stagnant materials sitting in there building up and causing blockage. Also, for the same reason, we should not have any interior partitions in the trap. There have been a lot of designs on traps over the years, and some of them have been pretty lousy. We'll look at a few. But no partitions, no walls inside of the trap. Just a pipe that bends and creates the trap. Slip joint is a common form of trap that we use underneath a sink, in a cabinet, or in places that are accessible. And they're great because they're easy to take apart and put back together. We can clear out the drain, we can service where needed. However, the code does limit these connections to these three places. One, the trap inlet, two, the trap outlet, and three, the trap seal. That's where we can have slip joint connections. All right, in 1002.3, we look at prohibited traps. These are the traps that you should not ever install. And there's two reasons that these are not allowed. One reason is because they don't work. That means they get siphoned out, they don't create a trap, a seal, and they allow sewer gases to come through. That's a bad thing. The other reason is that they get clogged really easy. Some of these designs are terrible. They clog all the time and that's why they got thrown out. Let's have a look. Prohibited trap number one. Traps that depend on moving parts to maintain the seal. This design used a floating ball that would go up as liquid moved through and sink down and create a seal when the liquid was gone. This was in the early stages of plumbing. Clearly something that could be clogged easily. So this one's out. Prohibited trap number two, the bell trap. This trap is created by extending the pipe up to the floor drain. You can see there's a strainer on the top with a bell shaped piece underneath. The bell would come down over the pipe, creating a slight overlap that would form a trap. However, these have a very minimal trap depth. They would evaporate quickly and very much stunk. They're out. Prohibited trap number three, traps that are crown vented. You can see the trap here. You can see a vent coming off. It's called a crown vent because it comes off the top of the pipe right after the trap. The problem with these is that as the fluid is moving through the trap, it gains some upward momentum and can actually go in and clog the vent. So the vent becomes obsolete. Crown venting is discussed in chapter nine and you can have a crown vent, but it has to be downstream by two pipe diameters. Little side note there. But crown vents like this one, they're out. Prohibited trap number four. Traps not integral with the fixture that depend on interior partitions for the seal, except for those traps constructed of an approved material that is resistant to corrosion and degradation. <whistles> Look at it here. There's partition walls inside of this trap contraption. Uh, you and I can see right away this is going to be problematic. The design includes multiple cleanouts, but <laughs> let's just not go there. Prohibited trap number five, the S trap. This one is one of the more common ones out there. The problem with this is that there is no vent. As the fixture is draining, the fluid gains momentum. It's moving through and gets siphoned out of the trap. You know this is happening at a sink or a fixture when you hear a glug, 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 glug similar to a toilet. The difference here is that this doesn't refill itself as a toilet does. These were common in houses built prior to 1970. Interesting side note here, this S-Trap kit is available on the shelf at a local hardware store for purchase right now and it's against code. But this brings up an important point. You can purchase things that are not allowed by code from some of your local hardware stores or even suppliers. So it's kind of important to know what is allowed and what is not allowed and stick with what is. And finally, prohibited trap number six. This is the drum trap. A drum trap is basically a cast iron can. The fluid comes in one side, 
You create the trap by the way the 90s are formed on the outlet of the drum. These things are notorious for clogging. They were installed for decades. Again, probably prior to 1970s where you're gonna see these in older homes. All right, I promised you the good, the bad, and the ugly. We've talked about how it should be done. We've seen what shouldn't be done. Now let's look at the ugly. Oh my goodness. This is such a redneck job. You know what I always say? The further you get from civilization, the less civilized your plumbing will become. I've seen some weird stuff in the country. Okay, this is not even a trap. This is just some abominable abuse of a trap. But they are connecting to a cleanout on the side of a floor drain which bypasses the trap below the floor. So this is an ironic use of a trap that eliminates a trap. Oh, this one's disgusting. You see how much pipe is in here? There is a cast iron trap involved. But look at all the 90s and the mess. Like this is gonna really slow the flow. I'll tell you that. And the actual trap is pretty deep because it goes from the 90 at the cast iron connection on the big stack all the way across pretty much to that cast iron cleanup. No, we don't pipe like this. And we don't pipe like this, the one on the left. You can buy accordion tail pieces and things like that. These are examples of, this is not self scouring. This is not self cleaning. Yes, they're available at your hardware store, but please don't use them. They were clearly just off by a little bit and used an accordion. You can swing the trap and fix that. Here's an example of what a plumber did later. Whoa, once again, the abominable abuse of an accordion tube. Look, this kit can actually be purchased at the same hardware store where I saw the S-trap as a kit. But this is not okay. Don't do this. Likewise, yet another kit. Look at this disgusting form of a trap at the bottom. Just a minute. I gotta hear you. Please don't ever do this as a professional. All right, well, here's a trap that went a little bit wrong. This was a homeowner do-it-yourselfer. A washer box does need a trap, but typically you're gonna put the trap under the washer box without all the extra. Uh-oh. Here's a connection with no trap at all. That's not gonna work. All right, and here are some trap situations that as plumbers, we don't particularly prefer having to work around cabinet shelving inside the cabinet. Sometimes you have to trim that out. This one luckily had it, you know, pre-manufactured, but if my pipe was not coming out of the right place on that wall, we would have some mess. But this is not against code and it's just something that we deal with. 1002.4 talks about the trap seal. That is the liquid seal that is created by the bend of the trap. At a minimum, it has to be two inches deep. At a maximum, it can be as much as four inches deep. You can create a deep seal trap on a glue trap by removing the street 90 and adding a regular 90 and extending it down a little bit. That can create a deeper seal on the trap. Deep seal traps are required to be accessible. How about this one? Sometimes that pipe comes out of the wall just a little bit too high or that sink that they installed is really deep and now we've got to flip a trap. This one is actually not against code because you could have up to a four inch depth for a trap seal, but this is not ideal. They're going to be standing water in the bottom of the basket strainer. 1002.4 also talks about trap seal protection. Trap seal protection is about maintaining liquid in the trap. If you have an emergency floor drain that's just there to catch water in case something floods, it's not going to stay wet. So we have to add water to that occasionally just to make sure that it doesn't dry out. There are different forms of trap primers. 1002.4.1.1 talks about potable water supply trap seal primer. It's a valve that allows a little bit of water down into the trap. Basically, you've created an intentional leak that just feeds the trap. Here's another example of the potable water supplied trap seal primer. It's coming right off of a flushometer valve, so each time the flushometer valve would flush, it's gonna push a little water back into the wall down to a floor drain to keep it wet. 1002.4.1.2 talks about reclaimed or gray water supply trap seal primer valve. It's basically the same thing, 
but it's using gray water. 1002.4.1.3 gives us information about the wastewater supplied trap primer device. Here's an example of that. You have a sink and it's a Y-shaped fitting that's kind of upside down intended to divert water from the drainage down into a pipe that would feed the floor drain to keep it wet. This one's not my favorite because we typically just run a little half inch tube. It used to be copper and now a lot of times PEX. And that little tube is gonna fill up with drain scum and junk that it's not gonna last. I just don't think this is a great long-term trap primer option. 1002.4.1.4 gives us information about the barrier type trap seal protection device. Rather than putting water down the drain, which is actually a waste of water, we can just put a rubber membrane down into the trap. It keeps air or gases from coming out, but allows liquid to go down when necessary. This is a great option, and I kind of wish I was the guy that thought this up, because for a little piece of rubber and plastic, you can buy it for $60. Man, what a great business idea. Anyway, these are a great option for floor drains that dry out quickly, or maybe in a washroom where it just doesn't get water, but you don't want to be adding a primer. Finally, 1002.4.1.5, this is a new addition in the 2021 International Plumbing Code. You can use a fixture drain connection for the trap primer if it's a lavatory within the same room on the same floor level and it feeds into the floor drain. So you're just basically adding hand wash water to the trap. Kind of an in interesting option there. 1002.5 talks about the size of fixture traps. That trap has to be sufficiently sized to drain rapidly not less than the table in 709.1, and that gives us drain sizing information. And the trap cannot be larger than the pipe that it drains into. We never reduce a drain size in the direction of flow. 1002.6 goes over building traps. These are basically prohibited. You don't wanna be trapping all the waste from the whole building. 1002.7 specifies that we should set the trap level and make sure that it's protected. Level meaning if you're doing slip joint and you're fitting those together, you can kind of fudge the angles and press them this way and that way. Again, don't go the accordion style, but you should be using fittings, getting a good approach and creating a nice level trap seal so that it works as it should. Now, when it comes to protection, we think about protection from freezing. Earlier, we saw this slide where there's not a trap involved, but this was intentional because this is in space that would freeze. Back behind the wall and in the house where it will not freeze is where we find a trap. Now again, as long as that stand piece does not exceed 24 inches in height and it doesn't travel more than 30 inches horizontally, we can do a sink like this. And in a garage that may freeze if it's left open, this gives us an option for a sink. 1002.8 gives us information about a recess for trap connections. 1002.9 talks about acid resistant traps and 1002.10 talks about plumbing in mental health centers and specifies that it should not be accessible. They will plumb that in such a way that people in those mental institutions cannot take the trap apart and use that to hurt themselves or someone else. And that does it for International Plumbing Code Chapter 10 up through 1002. Join me next time and we will look at interceptors and separators starting in 1003. I'll see you then.